in 2009, I was jailed, and uh, the reason, the real reason uh, of my imprisonment uh, was the fact that uh, I was criticizing uh, the various policies of our government as a blogger, as a citizen. Um, and when I was in jail, uh, my jail experience was uh, I wasn't tortured, uh, but it was a jail, so I had to I had to find time um, to do something that I had no time to do when I was not in jail, and I decided uh, and had the opportunity to read a lot of books, so I started reading books, and this sounds like a simple idea, but actually. Um, you don't have much time in normal life to read a lot of books. I mean, we are going to university or we are going, you know, to, to, to work. And usually, you know, it takes all of our time. But in jail, you know, you are in this cell and there is sometimes nobody else or one more person or a couple of people. Um, and that's it. So. So you have, uh, you have the chance to read the books that you have never read in your life. And you have a chance to turn this negative experience into something very positive and very enriching. And that is not just the philosophy I think you should apply in jail entirely in life. You need to learn how you turn the disadvantageous situation to your advantage. And that was, I think, something that I have done in jail. I've been doing it also before the jail and now after the jail. And that is, that is still, for me, also a big lesson from jail because that was the moment, the, one of the hardest moments in my life, which I turned uh, to be uh, one of the most enlightening moments of my life because within a one year and a half that I was in jail, I read quite uh, a lot of books. But of course, jail is not just positive experience and you want or you don't want it. There are at least, even if you learn not to suffer from this, uh, but cr even create some positive knowledge uh, that you consume and emotions. At the end of the day, of course, your family suffers a lot, you know. Uh, when I was coming from one court and we were w with this police car going to, to jail, there was uh, one uh, prisoner who, who, and we were just seeing the line of relatives who came to visit their relatives in the detention center. And this prisoner said that actually it is not us who are jailed, it is uh, they who are jailed or punished because, you know, they, uh, you know, your relatives, your wife, your mother, they, they care a lot about you and they suffer really every day. And it is harder for them, actually, because they don't know how are you in this moment in jail. So it's a huge suffering, of course, for the family. And unfortunately, neo-totalitarian states of our times are using this uh, very ancient institution, uh, uh, which is jail, trying to break you know, the spirit of freedom that actually is there in any society uh, in the world. Um, and one very important things, thing I've learned in jail, but also until now in my life, that you know, they can physically overcome you. They can, uh, um, they can you know, physically defeat you. They can get away with what they want. They have tanks, armies, police, uh, a lot of money. Uh, but one thing that nobody can take away from you, even if you are jailed, even if you are killed, it's your dignity and it's your moral power. And, uh, and I think that this is something that counts most. This is the most uh, uh, powerful weapon because even, even the, if they kill someone, even if they jail someone, but if that person uh, projects his or her moral power you know, beyond this jail, beyond even this country where he or she is jailed, 
then you know the the people in the country, in sometimes in jail and sometimes internationally, try to try to show acts of solidarity and try to or start to 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 be inspired by that you know examples of courage and nothing and no one goes uh, you know in vain and 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 is forgotten. Um, so I personally has been inspired by many movements around the world, by people that I've never met, by people who have uh, different religion, different faith, different uh, nationality, uh, speak different language than I speak. And I was reading about their stories and I was, uh, you know, uh, and I was inspired. Uh, and I think that this is, uh, this is something that everyone who uh, joins the struggle, but also everyone who um, wants to support people who join the struggle should know. Because if you know this, you can, um, you know, you can support uh, in a much more meaningful way and your struggle can, can be much more meaningful and strong, um, and especially you know the, the question of what people you know can do around the world to support freedom fighters, to support people who are imprisoned. Here, this thinking that I was just you know talking about plays a huge role because uh, just by telling sometimes story of a let's say prisoner. Uh, in a faraway country from your country, just telling it in your community, in your family, writing a blog about it, you know, researching and writing a blog about it, you know. Uh, let's say there are political prisoners in Azerbaijan and they have very, you know, compelling stories. Um, I could talk for hours about each of them. And if you research, if you learn about them, and if you write, let's say, in Venezuela or in, I don't know, uh, in U.S. or in Britain or in uh, South Africa, anywhere on the earth, uh, in your community, in your language, about the story of these people, you know, you never know. This can inspire so many other people in your own community, you know, to do something uh, for for this struggle. So that is um, that is the biggest thing that that I think I've learned in jail because of the books, but also because of the personal experience of being in jail that um, you should never give up. There is always a hope and actually you turn even your darkest days in the most powerful days in your life and, and you can do with your life something that can help many others, uh, you know, to, is to inspire others and, and that's, uh, that is something that is I think very important because inspiration, you know, gives people energy, motivation you know, to change the world and to change ourselves, but also to change the world around us. My friend Khadija Ismail, uh, she has received recently the, the prize of Pan America Center Freedom to Write Award. And uh, she couldn't come to receive this award because she's in jail. Uh, she has been jailed uh, in December 2014 and she may end up spending up to 12 years in jail. On, of course on bogus charges of tax evasion uh, and um, that is what our government unfortunately does. You know, they, they actually to uh, accuse Khadija of tax evasion, this is so uh, ironic and so devilish because uh, she was the investigator that uncovered the entire network of presidents, families, companies, bank accounts abroad, which the presidential family was hiding from public and uh, basically owning via those offshore companies various big chunks of uh, Azerbaijan economy. Um, so uh, I came to New York. Uh, and it was several days ago that I received on her behalf. She personally asked me to come and to get this award. Uh, and there were 800 people in the room, all American writers, including Salman Rushdie, but 
also many other famous names, people who work with Hollywood, who you know publish books, scripts um, for movies, and. I was talking, I was telling them, you know, Khadija's story. I was asking them to capture Khadija's life story <coughs> in a book or in a script for movie because I think she has an uh, amazing story. Khadija's story is um, a story of extraordinary courage. She was a very courageous human being, and she is, um, uh, because she was challenging the president in neo-totalitarian country, and she had no intention to. She had no intention to investigate and to find out that the president owns some companies. It's just every investigation she did ended up with finding out that the president stands behind those you know, companies or bank accounts and so on. So, um, so she was punished for, for doing this, uh, for telling the truth informing the public, the citizens. Um, government tried to silence her when they filmed her life in bed, her intimate life, and uh, they blackmailed her. They sent her a letter with a video, with photos, saying, look, if you don't stop doing investigations, we will we will jail you. Um, we will show, uh, you know, all these videos, and uh, we will put them online. And and she rejected this blackmailing. There were many people before her who disappeared from public sphere after similar uh, threats, and after government started to use this publicly, these videos about private life of citizens who were challenging the government in many different ways. So Khadija did not give up. And she's a woman, <coughs> sorry, in a, a socially conservative country, in a Muslim country. We are a secular country, but it's still Muslim in socially quite conservative country. So this could lead to an honor killing. This could leave lead to the, some fundamentalist elements, you know, attacking her. So she was risking with her life when she rejected this blackmailing. But she posted on Facebook a message saying that nothing never can stop me doing, you know, from doing my job and I will continue doing investigations and telling the truth to the people. So uh, after this, the government went public with and they published these videos online. Um, Khadija took, you know, this battle, and she she stood very brave and strong. Um, the government, the, the the situation was such that even the most conservative Muslim fundamentalist circles in Azerbaijan started to issue statements in support of Khadija, despite of the fact that she was open atheist. You know. And it's very touching because in those statements, I've read them, they said, you know, we may have differences about, you know, way of how to live our life with Khadija, but what you are doing as a government is very, you know, against the religion, against God, it's against humanity. And, you know, we are standing with Khadija because you know what you're aiming at. You are trying to silence the person who's telling the truth. And, and this is like uh, quite an amazing story because Khadija also, despite of being an atheist, when she was in freedom, she was supporting, besides of journalistic work, she also was an activist. And uh, she is, uh, trust me, she is one of the most professional journalists, not just in Azerbaijan, but I would say worldwide. The Christian Amanpour were giving, he, were giving Khadija uh, I think uh, a year or two years ago, an award, a Courage Award, uh, and uh, she had a wide recognition of colleagues worldwide about her professionalism. But at the same time, she wanted to be activist because, uh, not because she wanted, but because there was no one else. So she was forced to do things um, 
that have nothing to do with the pure journalism. And she was helping uh, political prisoners. She was fundraising money from people to help uh, families of political prisoners and also those who are religious and who are also who are not so religious. So and that was also, you know, paying back the tribute to her, you know, humanity that was transcending uh, religion, left or right divide uh, in our society. Um, <coughs> so Khadija's story, I think, um, is a story of, you know, dignity, courage, an extraordinary suffering and she represents you know lives <coughs> I'm sorry of millions of people who live in Azerbaijan in fear not everyone is jailed in Azerbaijan but there are a lot of people who cannot realize themselves because you know any society that lives in atmosphere of fear cannot give its citizens to fulfill their entire potential in life in their careers, uh, even in their families, because this uh, fear, you know, so often destroys the families. The people are afraid to talk about anything, you know, in, even in the kitchen. And um, and I think Khadija is the person, is one person in Azerbaijan who deserves a uh, uh, Nobel Prize because her story became symbolic, and in my opinion. Um, that uh, powerful energy of her story can inspire tens and hundreds of millions of people around the world exactly in the same way as many stories of courage of political prisoners in Iran, of political prisoners in Russia uh, or other con in other countries were inspiring Khadija. And I think that we are living in a very interconnected world and uh, what Khadija stands for, I think, is a, a part of identity of everyone who believes in democracy, in human rights, rule of law, and good governance. You know, those were um, values that Khadija cherished, and I think these are core values of free world. And I think that if all of us and each of us today we try. I'm sorry, if we try to, to tell Khadija's story, if we try to inform our communities, families about it, if we try to, to make videos even about this in her support, writing letters to, to Azerbaijani government, organize protests in front of Azerbaijani embassies everywhere in the world, you know, uh, that can be a very powerful message and that can be very powerful um, that can be many powerful acts of solidarity that will not be something good for Khadija or Azerbaijan. That would be something great for the cause that we all share and believe in. The cause, you know, to live in free, democratic, uh, you know, world where we can realize our potential, where every human being can realize our, uh, its potential without harassed, without being limited by a state or any other power.